My name's Kate Alexander. I'm the Associate Director of Florida Studio Theatre. I have been here, um, I think it's about 30 years. So I grew up as a kid here skateboarding to my job down the streets, people will remember. And we were a little tiny theater, a little tiny hut with a big mission. And we've grown into five theaters. So I have a, a, a big job here. I direct quite a few plays on stage. I also act sometimes. Um, I've been an actress in my career for many, many years. I founded the Florida Studio Theater Education Program, which is a school that serves about 600 students yearly, teaching them acting, improvisation, dance. And I've also co-developed our Write a Play program, which inspires playwriting uh, around the country and around the world, Israel, Scotland, and many of the students, and I think people watching this program are involved in that Write a Play program, and we have probably had many winners. You know, sometimes when we think of the arts, we can think they're very elitist, like, oh, we have to go to a big fancy place and there are chandeliers and we have to dress up and it's not for me. Like, what, did that, what does it have to do with my life? Or I'm in a big theater and I'm watching actors way far away, but what does it really have to do with me? But great theater has everything and everything to do with me. It teaches me how to live. It teaches me uh, how to be. It teaches me about my feelings. It teaches me to say, look, up on that stage, that's my brother. That's my relationship with my mother. Oh, that's how I felt when I lost my best friend. That's how I felt when people were cruel to me. It teaches us about our culture and the world around us. So our job at the theater was to work against this big highfalutin idea that it isn't for me and to be very accessible, and that's a big word, but what it means is everybody can come here. You can come in your jeans, you can come in a mink coat. You're coming here to look at this stage and say, I belong up there, I know who that is up there, and I'll come away learning something about myself. Well, a play coming to the theater is a long road. We read about 300 plays a year. We watch plays uh, all over the world. We uh, read in newspapers about upcoming plays all over the world. We had this play on our minds for about three years ago, but it's a very difficult play to do. You have to have the right actor and the right place to do it. So what we call a perfect storm, all things came together and it was the right time, we had the right actor, he was available, and we could produce the play. Well, this play has so much to say to all of us. We keep remarking that there are many anniversaries this year as the play opens. 150th of the Emancipation Proclamation, the Voting Rights Act is coming up in 2014, uh, and many more. And our relationship to civil rights and all the way back to slavery still remains, I don't want to say unnamed, but there still needs to be much more exploration and understanding of what our country truly is and truly means. Sometimes we, I think, get inured to that word, slavery, and by inured I mean dulled. Oh, that was then, that was then. And you see films coming out about it now. Um, 12 Years a Slave, for example, that are asking us to let's really reinvestigate, let's really, really look at what our country went through and then really struggled with all the way through the civil rights years. And that wasn't so long ago. So I think for students coming up to say, that wasn't so long ago, my grandparents were alive, my parents even were then, and our country was so divisive and ugly things were happening. And then, not that that's a message about history or about the past. We talked earlier about plays have to have meaning today. We need to take those same concepts, how hate might have been very aggressive and very explicit with separate drinking fountains or bathrooms, but who do we hate today? 
Who do we punish today? Who in my heart do I look at and say, I don't like them? You know, we hear a lot um, in schools about things like bullying. We get slogans or we must address bullying. But we have to look behind that, even that word, bullying. Where does hate come from? Does it come from my sense of um, my group and I'm better and they're not? Does it come from a sense of fear? And I think it behooves each one of us as people, as students, as children, we've all been laughed at. I don't think anyone watching this doesn't remember a time when we've been hurt or criticized or jeered at or something. We have to take those memories and say, who does it belong to today? And in that way, that makes this play relevant. That makes Thurgood Marshall's words important and have a legacy that it doesn't belong to history, it belongs to today. I think each audience member takes something away differently. A play never tells you what to feel. It never tells you what to behave and it is never a do this, don't do that, this is right and this is wrong. It's our hope that a play, by engaging your feelings, your empathy, your emotions, you come away more uh, able, more willing to take risks so that the next time you face something harsh or ugly or wrong, in your opinion, that you stand up, that you don't become a bystander, but that you take action. And that could be with friends, uh, in a public sphere, anywhere. It isn't big ideas, and a play doesn't give you big ideas. It's not meant to be uh, rhetoric. It's meant to say, what can I take away now, and how am I changed? Well, I'm very excited about the outreach, and it's one of uh, the very exciting reasons, uh, or the very exciting outcomes, actually, of working on the show. And it surprised me. We wanted a community dialogue, and by that I mean a play has to live with on, with beyond its walls. It's going to see 15,000 people, and 2,000 uh, students will be coming. But to get everybody talking and exploring and thinking about how we can use um, these concepts of hate and rejection and civil rights in our community, not in the world, not in America, not in a big way, but right here and right now. So, for example, the Sarasota Ministry Association is going to be, uh, they're in development for the month of February to declare it Speaking Racism from Our Pulpits Month. And all of the religions, or many of the religions, and many of the churches or synagogues or where people worship, will be talking about racism, civil rights, and what it means to their congregation. And we should all be talking about this. We're, we're in a world that we see every day on the news, images of hate, images of injustice, and images of cruelty. We see it in our world. So it behooves us, it's important that we all begin talking about it and not shunning it away, that it's something somebody else does. I'm a good person, I don't feel that way, but that we all take responsibility. And where do we do that? Right now here in our community. So with all the students coming, which we're so excited to talk with, to have talkbacks with, that they talk with their families, that then they go to their place of worship and they're talking there. And then their little sister has a Sunday or Saturday school book that we're talking about it there, and that there's panel discussions for the parents to talk about. Something can happen that's remarkable, and remarkable in our city. I don't think many cities can do this and have a citywide dialogue or a citywide talk on injustice. That's a rare phenomena, and you have to belong to a very special city with committed people in power that will say, we're gonna do it, and they are. They've been coming forth. He was a champion. His life was in danger even going into these towns. He had to sleep, as we say, in different places every night to, for self-protection. He was 
blazing a trail where nobody else had gone and protecting people that were so victimized and powerless they couldn't vote, they couldn't go to a policeman and say, I need your help. We can learn about all this and this climate of hate that he trailblazed deep, deep, deep into the South alone. There were other lawyers with him, with the NAACP that did this also, but he very slowly toppled these little courts and then like a house of cards, something very big in our country fell. And that's called segregation. But it took chipping away and a great amount of courage and risk. What do we take away? Courage, risk, heroism, ideals, living those ideals, living who we are. And you don't have to be. He never considered himself a hero. He considered himself a man who did his work. As he said, his uh, sword was the Constitution. And he said the heroes were those who stayed behind and had to live in these places. Uh, and then you'll see on stage we have uh, slides of which is a moment I love of these people that lived under terrible duress and he gave them the worth. So there's a thousand lessons in this and they're not lessons, they're ways to live. Um, there's a line I love about the theater and it's, it is that religion prepares us for our great moments in our life, uh, birth, death, weddings, fun funerals, but the theater prepares us for our ordinary moments. Thurgood prepares us for our ordinary moments and meeting them uh, as a ch champion. And all of us fall short every day. <laughs> and all of us can be re-inspired of what it means to be a great human being. As a teenager, I remember seeing a miniseries called Separate But Equal. Uh, stay with me. Uh, had a lot of relevance because of the importance of the case. And then when, uh, when I started rehearsing this play, I did it, at, I've done this play previously at the Pittsburgh Public Theater seven months ago. And in, in the process of rehearsing, I, I, I tapped back into that miniseries. And uh, I realized when I looked, listened to the miniseries and looked at my script, it, I found out that like this, the script is like a theatrical version of the miniseries, which is different because normally, you know, uh, normally it's you do a movie based upon a play, but here we're doing a, a play based upon a, a miniseries. And so I thought that was very interesting. Same writer. And so one, one thing I did pick up on is that all, all these people who are in this miniseries, I essentially in, in the one man show have to play them. So obviously that's a humongous, uh, you know, challenge and something that I'm enjoying doing. One of the main books I read was called The Thurgood Marshall Letters. And so we're talking 300 letters written by this man to various peoples, friends, foes, uh, family members, uh, uh, newspaper uh, editors. And so you can learn a lot about a man about in terms of how he communicates, in terms of how he writes. And so I got his through line, his, you know, how he told stories, how he used humor uh, in, a very, in various ways, and also just his persistence, you learn about, you know, it's the third time he's, you know, and he always answers a letter back. You know, he, he can't let you, you know, win even in, you know, he's got to rebut you. And that's the, that lawyer in him. And so that, that, that was something that I found very interesting because one of the things about him as a lawyer, he always knew that there was a round two. There was going to be a rematch. So if you won, he didn't go home and sulk and give up or move on to the next case. He immediately got on the appeal process, which is a pretty powerful, uh, you know, skill set to have as an attorney. So... Uh, and then I read another great book called Young Thurgood, which was uh, a series of interviews and information from people in his past. You know, you see pictures of the school he went to, Colored High. You see his transcripts. You see how an incredible debater that he was. Because a lot of people know he was on a, on a, a you know, he was an excellent debater before he even became a lawyer. And so uh, you, you see how, you know, other schools that they would travel to and how, you know, how they would kick butt. And so uh, you learn about some of the people who influenced him. You learn that he went to school with Langston Hughes and how that influenced him. You learn uh, in, in that book. And so also, uh, you know, so I just felt like it, it, it allowed me to go to Baltimore. It didn't, it didn't take me to his New York days. It didn't take me to his Supreme Court days. It took me into the young man's days. 
And so that was incredibly helpful. And then there's a lot of pictures of his family members. You know, he spent hours just staring at them and just letting them feed you and become a part of your life. So, well, it, I mean, he had his doubts, you know, but he's not the kind of person, he wasn't the kind of person that let his doubts stop him. He acknowledged my doubts, he acknowledged, and I say my, because as a performing artist, you must, you know, you can't, the character can't be here and you, you're there. You gotta marry it, meld yourself together. So uh, he acknowledged, you know, that this is gonna be rough, but this is, was a man who never backed down from challenges. And so, uh, again, that's bravery. I mean, that's heroism. And that's kind of like what this piece is for me. You learn, you know, how heroic this man was. I mean, this is a classic hero journey story. You know, the reluctant, warrior, the guy who doesn't set out to be a, uh, a hero, but all roads are leading to him, leading him to the battle that he must win because nobody else can do it. And so once he accepts the challenge of, or he realizes and stops ignoring all the signposts that he got in terms of like, you have to do this. You have to be out in the front. You are the chosen one. And so once he acknowledged that and accepted that, he had to, you know, work his butt off, you know, just like as a performing artist, you know, you know, sometimes we have to, well, in my early days, you had to take money jobs. You know, you have to take a job that you work during the day, but do your shows in the evening or audition in between your hours at work. We had to essentially do the same thing. He had to wait tables on a train and study his, you know, work uh, at night and never give up. And so, um, but again, with, it's just like Luke in, in uh, Star Wars. He didn't want to leave the farm, but he had to. Dorothy wanted to leave Kansas, you know, but she realized that really you need to, everything you think you need is right here. And so that's what uh, Thurgood had to understand that everything, you're equipped for this journey. You may have doubts, but everything you need, you have. Your father already trained you to be a lawyer because he, you know, gave you the fighter spirit. And he also took you, took Thurgood down to, to sit in, you know, the courtrooms to observe, you know, court cases. That, that's training as a lawyer. And so even though he's just a young kid going along for the ride, he, his father gave him those prerequisite skills that he would later need. His teacher told him he was, you know, uh, disputatious, argumentative. And he said, so let's use that, all these skills that you have, this argumentative fighting spirit, the stubborn family that you come from, let's use that to inform the, this superstar lawyer that you have to become. If you don't, who will? And so all that, that's, you know, all that has been part of my process. Well, as a performing artist, you love words. You know, uh, you love poetic language. And there's a lot of poetry in a lot of his speeches, even though he wasn't trying to be poetic. But there's a lot of musicality. There's a lot of rhythm to it. There's a lot, there, there are builds, there are highs and lows, there are dramatic pauses. Again, you know, things that lawyers have to have, but then also somebody like myself, a performing artist, also have to have. So I had to find that, that music, you know, make these more than just words, you know. And see, that's the thing, I mean, to me, I mean, this play is 78 pages long, the script that I work with, and so, you know, that's a lot of material to have to spit out. But anybody can memorize, a, 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 you know, anybody can say a memorized line, but it's a question of why you're saying it. Since that, and that's really, you know, the in incredible challenge for me is the psychology behind what these words are coming out. Why is he saying these words instead of those words? Why did he choose this argument instead of phrasing it another way? Is any, like I say, anybody can say memorized lines, anybody. But that's not what I'm up here doing. You know, I mean, these words are coming out of the psychology of this man. So it's really individual. You know, every person is gonna take away something different. You know, if you're a person who lived that time, it's gonna take you back. If you're a person who missed it by one generation, you'll think about that. If you're a person whose parents lived it, you'll now get a chance to see it, the, the things that they were talking about. Uh, I heard, I have had people say, this made me understand my mother more because now this is what she was talking about. Now I, I, put, I put myself in the shoes of my mother and, and now I understand why a lot of things are the way they are for her. And so again, that's what anyone takes away from it is kind of personal. But then also people are gonna be moved. Also people are gonna be inspired. You know, there's some, there, there's some life lessons that'll come out of this piece in terms of uh, perseverance, you know, don't ever give up. I mean, I know that's a cliche, but I mean, that's an incredible formula for life. And a lot of youngsters, you know, they, they heard that before, but a lot of youngsters let small setbacks derail them. So, but if you're in tune with that, if, you know, if you're a young man who's trying to decide whether or not you should do this or that, and you don't know because nobody's helping you out or nobody's giving you green lights or 
and you know you see all these red lights perhaps you see Thurgood's story and you say well wait a minute there was no he didn't you know he, just, he only stopped at a red light you know he didn't get off the road he kept kept it moving and so you know again it's in the, it's all based upon where you're at in your own life and I'm open to however someone interprets it as long as they get something that's personal for them I mean, I, I think pretty much you, you know everybody heard of him but they don't know what they know of him I mean for, to a lot of people it's just going to be the name of a school you know a lot of schools named Thurgood Marshall in America and uh, uh, again it's, it's what it's, it's the openness that you when you come that's what the beauty of art I mean if you're open to it it could take you in so many different directions like I said if anybody could learn lessons in terms of hard work, you know, the studying that this man had to do, you know, and with no complaints. He didn't complain that I had to wait tables and then study law, you know, read 10 cases at night. He did it. And so you might be a person who maybe you're thinking about being a lawyer. You don't know what the path is, you know, but now you get a chance to see, well, hell, Thurgood, a young guy from Baltimore, you know, from the streets of Baltimore, if he could rise up to, to that kind of level, why not me? And so hopefully there's some kids that will be inspired by that. Or some kids are just, you know, just also just, are just moved by it, you know, just like, wow, I didn't know all that, you know, this, you know, he was a great man, things like that, so. Well, I, just driving around Sarasota, I'm seeing some of these uh, markers that commemorate certain areas, you know, this was, you know, this was the black community, you know, uh, I'm, I'm sitting on Lido Beach, you know, relaxing and enjoying myself, but when I came off, I saw the sign that said, well, it wasn't until 1933 that, you know, African Americans could even come to that beach. You know, gave you a swimming pool and that was it. But, you know, why a swimming pool and not the beach? We just want to enjoy the, the sunshine like you. And so uh, I, I'm learning about the history of Sarasota through those kinds of things. And so whatever I can lend in terms of, you know, this piece or, you know, uh, speaking or whatever, you know, whatever I can do to help people to understand the importance because you, you can't just live life. And that's the, what a lot of youngsters are, are concerned about. You know, a lot of youngsters, you know, a lot of youngsters are only worried about today and tomorrow. You know, a lot of them don't really want to hear about the past. And that's just not African-American kids. That's this, this, that's this generation in general. They don't want to hear about anything that's, you know, five, 10 years old. They're like, that's played out. Well, you know, I still, we still have to do our jobs, whether you want to hear it or not, <laughs> you know, still have to tell you. So, that's what, what, what this is going to be about. I accept it, that this play is, is touching people. You know, I can't shy away from that. You know, and you, it's not always like that. Sometimes you take a job because of money. Sometimes you just take it because of whatever reason. But sometimes you get a piece that, you know, is really meaningful to a lot of people. And you have to, you know, you can't, that's your responsibility as an artist. So, you know, I've been, you know, uh, given the responsibility of this role. I have the blessings of the playwright, you know. Uh, and a lot of times, you know, that's why he kind of was reluctant to let it be done, you know, because he's like, I want it to be done right. If it's not going to be done right, it can't be done. And so, I, you know, the fact that he trusted me with his work, that makes you when, you, when you, when somebody trusts you and you, you know, don't do anything to mess up that trust, that, again, that's, that's a life lesson, you know, that, 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 that shows you the importance of being trustworthy, you know, and it show, you, show, show, shows you the importance of you can only be trusted if you know what you're doing. So make sure that you know what you're doing. And so that's what, when I'm up here, I, I got to be on my game. I got to know what I'm doing, and I got to trust everybody involved in the process, including the audience, because the audience goes along for the ride. If they don't go along for the ride, it's going to be a, a bumpy ride. But there, we're all in this together. Let's just see where we, you know, at, at the end of these 90 minutes, let's see where, where we are at. Art is incredibly important. I mean, there's funding that has been taken away from art. I mean, art takes you away from your own problems, your own life. You know, you go on this your journey. It teaches you about life. It teaches you about yourself. You know, uh, artists, we, what we do as artists, Florida Studio Theater, the next city or whatever, I mean, we share publicly what everybody else experiences privately. So just come back enjoy yourself and learn you know sometimes you're gonna to come to the theater and you're not gonna learn anything you're just gonna enjoy yourself sometimes you're just gonna have a good time here you're gonna learn and don't be afraid of the serious nature of it you know learn allow yourself to be open from the experience and you just never know what you know how it will change you so but that's what I think this is for some people it can be life-changing you know